If you read any PC gaming comment section right now, you think the new Steam Machine is dead on arrival. The elite crowd says this CPU is weak, the 16 gigs of RAM are barely scraping by, and the 8 gigabytes of VRAM is being called e-waste. But they are fundamentally wrong. They are ignoring the single most important piece of data that decides what Valve builds, the Steam Hardware Survey. I've pulled the latest numbers and when you compare the Steam Machine specs to the actual average PC game, Gamer, the truth is undeniable. The Steam Machine is built to match or beat over 70% of Steam users. They aimed for the majority and the price will be a big factor. The Steam Machine is a compact cube-like PC. It packs a custom AMD Zen 4 6-core 12-thread CPU, paired with an RDNA 3 GPU, featuring 28 compute units, backed by a unified 16GB of DDR5 and 8GB of GDDR6. VRAM. It's quiet, it's sleek, and it runs SteamOS. And the enthusiast community looked at that, squinted, and said, that's a mid-range laptop. But here is Valve's real goal. The mandate that we had was, you need to be able to play every game on Steam, or at least have this, the enough performance to play every game on Steam at 4K, 60 hertz, when uh, using upscaling. And so that was kind of like the, the, the important thing, because we didn't want people to worry about whether their Steam machine supports whatever game they're playing. We just wanted it to be a pretty simple message that yes, if it's on Steam, this device will have enough performance to play to these settings. That's their mission statement, not to brute force Cyberpunk 2077 at native 4K, but to deliver a phenomenal 4K experience in your living room using modern tech like FSR. Valve engineer Yazan stated based on their data, and um, the Steam machine is equal or better than 70% of what people have at home. Valve is running a private company. They don't need to say they're using the latest tech, give a bunch of false promises just to appease some stockholders. They look at the millions of Steam users and built a product for them. So let's see the actual breakdown. The first common complaint I see is only six Zen 4 cores. We need eight, maybe 12. So let's take a look at the Steam hardware survey and look at the CPU core distribution. The single most popular core count on Steam at nearly 30 30% of all users is 6 cores. If you include 4 cores and less, you've already captured almost half of the market. So Valve isn't exactly cheaping out. They mirrored the single most common processor configuration in the entire Steam user base. The next big complaint you will see is 8GB of VRAM is e-waste. Games demand 12GB at least now. And this one hurts the enthusiast the most. The single largest segment of GPU VRAM capacity is still 8GB sitting at over 33% of the market. Add in the users on 6 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes or even less, and you will quickly realize that 8 gigabytes is still the majority standard. So calling this e-waste is simply ignoring the economic reality of the average gamer. For the millions still rocking an older 4 gigabytes or 6 gigabytes card, this 8 gigabyte Steam machine is a great option. Another complaint is it can only hit 4K 60 Hertz with upscaling. So when we go back and look at the server, Survey, it reveals that around 55% of all Steam users are still playing on a 1080p display. Another significant chunk is on 1440p. This means that for 55% of players on 1080p, this little cube is absolutely overkill as most gamers don't even have or use a 4K monitor. The fact that it can hit 4K via upscaling simply extends its lifespan for when more people finally upgrade their monitors or TVs, not the 1% of gamers who are just running $3,000 rigs. As if you are someone who cares about having and running the latest specs, I don't think you are the correct audience for a PC console hybrid. And the biggest argument for the Steam Machine's existence isn't just about the raw hardware survey numbers. It's about a proven desire for this exact experience, and the proof is sitting with the Steam Deck. Valve's team didn't just guess that people wanted a big screen PC console. They saw it happen organically. Valve's Pierre Loop confirmed that when we look at that, you know, it's between 10 and 15% of Steam Decks at a given time are connected to an external display. So that's, that's about uh, what we're looking at in, term, in terms of docked use, uh, which for us is encouraging enough that, you know, we, we think a product like the Steam Machine makes sense as well. That's millions of users trying to make a handheld console into a full-blown TV-based gaming PC. And those users said that... A lot of feedback saying that the experience around getting in and out of game and what they, you know, how it's connecting to the TV, CC, all that was working really good. 
they just wished that they had, you know, a little bit more crispness and graphics horsepower to work with. And so that definitely helped us dial the right level of performance uh, to, to get there. The, the fact that so many people are opting for that experience, it just proved that the software experience is already good enough that people are opting into it. So it's really more about like proving to ourselves that yes, the experience is already really good. We just had to kind of make it even better, push over the line and deliver it to those people. So the Steam Machine is Valve's direct answer to that feedback. It's the ultimate version of the Steam Deck, but built for a living room, specifically engineered to provide the performance and graphical fidelity those 10 to 15% of docked users were asking for, delivering roughly six times the graphical horsepower of the original Steam Deck. You have things like the effortless library transfer, and Valve engineer Jeremy said it perfectly. You can take your catalog from your Steam Deck or from your Steam Machine and they're fully interoperable. So you can plug it in here and just bring it along with you. Imagine grabbing the micro SD card out of your Steam Deck, walking into the living room and sticking it straight into your Steam Machine to continue your game on the big screen with no downloads required. So you don't have to spend hours re-downloading all of your same games. You can just put your favorites on a micro SD card and bring them along with you. The Steam Machine runs SteamOS, delivering all the conveniences we love from the deck. Fast suspend and resume, background updates and an easy to use console interface. But here is where Valve shows its hand. You can still switch to a full KDE Plasma desktop, install your own apps, or even install Windows if you absolutely have to. So for the people who are complaining that the Steam Machine won't run a specific game like ones with a kernel anti-cheat, you can just switch the operating system. Gabe Newell describes the openness of the PC ecosystem as its superpower. Our view is that the openness of the PC ecosystem is the superpower yeah. right, that we, benef we all collectively benefit from. So if you want to install the Epic Game Store on here, if you want to you know, run an Oculus Quest on it, those things are, those are all great. That's, those are features, right? Yeah. Um, that's what I want to hear as a gamer. I don't want to hear that somebody's got some Trojan horse that's going to try to lock me down. I want to hear whatever I want to do. If there's hardware I want to attach to it, if there's software I want to install, I can just go, uh, go and do it. So the Steam Machine doesn't have the top of the line specs in every category, but it does have the average Steam user in mind. The Steam Machine isn't designed to replace your PC, but if you really want, you could use it as one. Take the Steam Deck for example, which many people bought as their entry into PC gaming. Not everyone can buy the top of the line PC every year, and that's what these devices are capitalizing on, giving anyone access to the Steam ecosystem. But the biggest question question people have is the price. And Valve has made it clear, they will not price the Steam Machine like a subsidized console. They will price it competitively with some PC builds. Current estimates for building a PC with comparable parts, Zen 4 CPU, RDNA 3 GPU, 16GB DDR5, put the cost around $750 to $800, depending on your region and different prices. If Valve can deliver a quiet, pre-built, small form factor machine with an internal power supply for potentially $600 to $800, seeing as Valve has said it will be competitive to just building it yourself, that's actually a bargain for the living room market. It's an easy, frictionless on-ramp to PC gaming. The big mistake that's being made when people are estimating the price is comparing it to a PlayStation or Xbox console, when in reality you should be comparing it to other PCs. And with Valve announcing this new hardware, the big elephant in the room is the Steam Deck 2. But Valve has been clear. They're not releasing a successor until a generational leap in silicon technology delivers a massive performance per watt improvement. Valve software engineer Pierre said they aren't interested in a 20%, 30%, or even 50% jump. They want a major shift. The original Steam Deck remains a main market leader because it hit the sweet spot of price and performance. One interesting detail is that currently Linux holds 3% of the operating systems using Steam, which was a big milestone for them. So we'll be interesting to see what this number hits in one year or even more after the release of this new hardware. Could we see Linux hit 5 or even 10% soon? So the elite PC crowd can call the Steam Machine e-waste or dead on arrival all they want, but they fundamentally have missed the point. This device wasn't really built for them. It was built for the millions of people who are still on a 4-core CPU on 8GB of RAM, staring at a 1080p screen, who want the PC library 
library they own on their big living room TV with zero headaches. It is the console for 70% of gamers. But what are your thoughts on the new Steam Machine? Are you planning on buying it in 2026?